Hello and welcome to my second tutorial video. Um, just a recap. Well, let me first go over a couple of things that have changed since last video. I upgraded to the newest Blender, Blender 2.6.2. Don't worry though, everything that we've gone over is exactly the same as far as the interface. Um, I'm also trying to boost the sound level of the mic. It seemed a little quiet in my last video, so let me know if there's too much background noise, if you, which, however you guys like it. I can work it both. Um, so with that, let's just go ahead and get started. You got a new splash screen with 2.6.2. But what we're going to go over today is we went over the interface last time and everything. We're going to look at the 3D view window today. And the 3D view window, just again, is this is this uh, main part where you see the shapes and the grid and the menu on the side and its header is underneath it. So we're going to take a look at how to move things around. And the first thing you'll notice is again this cube and inside the cube you'll see it has this white circle with the red, green, and blue arrows. Those represent the X, Y, and Z axes relative to that shape. And the circle is the white circle that connects all of those arrows is the center of that cube. Um, you'll also see, mine's moved from the center, but you'll see this, uh, if you right click anywhere, you'll see this crosshairs with the red and white circle. This is your cursor. And that's similar to a cursor in like a text editing program. If you want to insert something, it'll insert wherever the cursor is. And I'll kind of touch on that a little more later. Uh, you'll notice this black line with the little, this is supposed to be a sun symbol on the top of it, those concentric circles. That is a light source. Um, I don't know much more than that at this point. The triangle prism on the left, also in black, is the camera, the viewing angle. So if I were to render the scene right now to make a picture or a movie or whatever, it would go from this viewpoint on this camera. And you can actually on your numpad, make sure your cursor is inside of the 3D view window. If you hit zero on your numpad, it'll actually show you that viewport where you can see what's going to be rendered from this viewpoint. Um, and that's always a good thing to check before you render. Uh, also of note is the grid itself. The grid boxes are actually one blender unit long and one blender unit wide. So they make up one square blender unit as far as area goes. Now what a blender unit is, you can set that I believe when you render it. I'm not actually sure where you can set it but I am told you can change the scale to whatever you want it to be. Right now it's just relative. Uh, you'll also notice down in the bottom left corner of this window you have the global XYZ axes, also red, green, and blue for X, Y, and Z. That's kind of a universal. And then you have this one cube cube is the currently selected shape. You can tell by the orange outline. And the one means the first frame of animation. We don't have any other frames at this point, so one is all you'll see. Um, so that's the first frame of animation if we were to be making an animation. And cube is the shape that's selected. So uh, I know the first thing I wanted to do is rotate this and play with this view. You can do that by, hopefully you have a three button mouse if you click on the scroll wheel, the third mouse button, hold that down and rotate it, you can actually rotate this view up and down and left and right. So that again, that's the middle mouse button, the scroll wheel itself, clicking and holding that and then dragging the view, you can rotate it. Um, that's something I wanted to do from the moment I opened the program. Also, you can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel in and out. You can also, for a more fine-tuned thing, you can hold down um, control and then click and drag the middle mouse button just like you would to rotate, but since you're holding down control it'll zoom as you move the mouse. Um, and that's only in and out going up and down. One thing I should mention on zooming, and this is a good brush with uh, perspective versus um, orthographic views, if on the numpad, make sure your mouse is in the 3D view window. On the numpad, hit 5, and you'll notice it kind of looks funny. But what this is is orthographic. All of these lines are now parallel to each other. They don't 
converge at some point in the distance to give the illusion of perspective and everything is to scale. Hit 5 again to toggle back to perspective where these lines are actually no longer parallel and if they were to extend infinitely back into the distance they would actually converge on a point. That gives a uh, illusion of depth. So what I wanted to touch on is when you're in perspective like this and you zoom in if you just keep zooming in it'll actually cut through the box and you'll see all of a sudden I'm inside of the box. Um, that is unique to this perspective view. For instance if I hit 5 on the numpad and switch to the orthographic view and I zoom in it's more like a telescope. I'll never actually clip through the box. I'll just end up really really zoomed in on that face. So that's something to keep in mind for later use. And again, it's five on the numpad to switch between those orthographic and perspective views. Now, that's the 3D view window in a nutshell. Um, and the other way, okay, so you can rotate with the middle mouse button, you can set your cursor with the left mouse button, and you can select objects with the right mouse button. So. For example, if I wanted to click on this light source, I'd do the left mouse button. And notice that all of a sudden is in orange. And down here in the left, in the bottom left, it says lamp instead of cube. And I can click left click, sorry, right mouse click back onto that cube. Right mouse click to select whatever I want. Um, and it'll tell me what's selected and it'll be orange. So that's the right mouse click. Left mouse click will place your cursor. Okay, the other way to, sh the, to change the view is to what's called dolly and if you hold down shift and scroll the middle mouse button it'll go up and down or if you hold down control and do it it'll go left and right so that's again holding down either shift to go up and down or control to go right and left and then scrolling the middle mouse button the scroll wheel on your mouse um, those are the basic controls for how to navigate things and let me try and get the view back to you about how it was and let's see go down just trying to get used to those controls still now in the 3d view you'll have a list of modes there are there's this pull down menu on the header you'll see it's in object mode by default and if you click on that scroll down menu you have edit mode sculpt mode vertex texture and weight paint modes um, so all these different modes to do different things to change this object. Object mode is kind of the overview way to look at it. And if you hit tab while your mouse is in the 3D view window, it'll switch between edit mode and object mode. If you're in some other mode, like say sculpt mode, it'll switch between edit mode and whatever mode you're on. Otherwise, it'll just go between edit and object mode. So edit mode kind of lets you play with the faces and the vertices and hopefully I can get into that more on the next video but for now you'll just need to be able to look at that header and always know what mode you're in so you know what you're doing because you can only do certain things and use certain tools in certain modes um, also note that the cursor is different in each mode so if I hit tab to go to edit mode it changes to the plus instead of the arrow cursor so always pay attention to what mode you're in because you know clicking and dragging things will do different things in different modes. Um, also, let's see. Okay, so if you hit Z, the letter Z or Zeta, depending on where you're from, it will switch from a surface view to a wireframe view, and that's nice if your surface kind of blocks. Um, the, or the lighting's not great and you can't see the, the whole shape or you have a really complex shape and you want to just get rid of the surface material, hit Z and it'll just toggle between wireframe and surface. You can also come down here to this pull down menu next to object mode and you can manually change it from uh, texture or solid which is the default or wireframe or bounding box which I'm not totally sure about yet. Um, so solid's the default. If you hit Z, it'll just toggle between solid and wireframe. Okay, so the last thing to play with, and this is really important to make sure you're familiar with, 
is where to put your cursor. Let's say I wanted to put my cursor on the plane. Um, let's say I wanted to put it right here on the plane. It looks like it's on the plane right where I put it. But if you rotate, again remember holding the middle mouse button or the scroll wheel and rotating, it's under the plane. Now the reason that happens is because this is a 2D representation. I only have two dimensions, up, down, left, and right. That's four directions, but only two dimensions. So I can't really get it well situated with just one click. And sometimes it'll take multiple clicks to try and get it close to where I want it. And even if it's not exactly where I want it, if I can get it as close as possible, then I can move things. And I'm pretty sure if you right click on something and drag it, an object, it'll, it'll move that object. So for example, if I insert a box a little off from where I want it, I can always click and, and drag that with the right click. So play around with that for a little bit and um, get used to trying to put that cursor where you want it. And I'll be back next time, next week with a video, hopefully doing more with the wire mesh on the cube.